talk about connection today. This will be our last. Uh, we've done some messages here through the summer off the song, So Will I. We started out several weeks back. We talked about worship. We've talked about faith. We've talked about forgiveness. And Derek talked to us a couple of weeks back about life on Malta. All those things that we will do in this place of So Will I. We've kind of learned that song this summer. And we've thought these thoughts about So Will I. The, the thing for me today, where I'm at and where the Lord le- keeps leading me, is in this thought of connection. And what does that mean? What does that look like? And you know, on the front of the bulletin, it's what it says, Solitude Baptist Church. It says, connecting to God by connecting with others, serving God by serving others. Our vision statement and that part of connection to me has just become very, very powerful for me, within me. And I think that for us as a church to try to grasp that concept of connection. Now, if there's anybody I would look to in the Bible that understands connection, his name would be Paul. The Apostle Paul, in my opinion, of anybody that ever lived and walked on the face of the earth who was a human being, who understood connection, it was him. He grasped connection, connection with God, and connection with people. He understood that. He grasped that. He realized. If you look at your bulletin handout, you'll see there, we kind of put a little note about it before I read. And it just says this, a relationship in which a person, a thing, or an idea is linked or joined to someone else or something else. It's a link. It's a connection. It's a, it's a place where there is a joining together of something. As we talk about this today, I want you to think about our place of being connected with God, of being connected with other people, what God would have us to grasp and seem to know about that. And in Philippians chapter 3, Paul's going to talk about that. We're going to hear that just a little bit. I'm just going to read a few verses in verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. 9, 10 through there. I'll read a little bit, then we'll talk a little bit, and we'll just kind of see where God takes us here on a, on a journey. You know, when Paul started on his journey, I bet he would have never believed that he would have been a guy who wrote about one-third of the Bible. He would have never grasped that. He would have never believed that he would have been a missionary. He would have traveled all over uh, the, uh, the Middle East and, and part of Asia and started multiple churches, seen multiple people called into that ministry. He, he would have never grasped that he would have done all of these things. But, you know, all of those things were brought about through connection. Through his connection with God, that happens. Sometimes we want to do stuff and we want to get God involved in it rather than understanding God is the core of it. He's the center of it. When I'm connected to him, everything else is going to flow out of that. So if we kind of think about that uh, definition again, just think about that of the joining together, of the coming together. Paul says this, Romans 3, I mean Philippians 3, 8. More than that. I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish that I may gain Christ, and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it or have become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and reaching forward to what lies ahead... I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. This moment, we can come into this place. We can worship you. God, we can call upon your name. God, we can grasp and understand salvation by grace through faith. The words that Derek read earlier from Ephesians 2, the truth that Paul kept bringing to us. We thank you for that. Thank you for every person in this room right now, God, who knows that salvation. And I pray for someone who maybe does not. And Lord, as we talk about connection, and as we think about connection with you, I pray, God, that you will draw our minds. God, that you will open our hearts. God, that we would lean in, that we would listen. And God, we would be responsive to what you would say to us today. That we would be able to know, God, this connection. That we could understand the connection Paul had. And God, that you want us to have, that we can know this place, God, of being linked together, to being joined together, to being with you. We thank you. Bless. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To connect. 
to connect. If you think about that, it's interesting. I try to grasp that in some different ways for me. And just think about some practical things for me in connection. And the whole thought of connect. So I just kind of was writing in my office and making notes. To connect means just to be joined together. And here is my thought of joining together. To be joined together, when I was a kid and we began to go some places, the coolest thing in the world to me was get a hotel room that had an adjoining room. That was just the coolest thing. Because you shut the door, you go in, and all of a sudden there's an inside door. And I learned you could open that inside door. And if the people on the other side was connected with you, they would open their door. And you could just go from room to room without going outside. And there's like a linking together, a joining together. So think about that. There's a connection in that where you can pass through. The outside world can't see it. But there's an inside thing goes on. And there's a connection that goes on. You know, kind of like, that's my place with God. I have a place with God where I have a connection with him. And sometimes you can always see that. You may not always know that, but there's a passageway. There's a pathway. There's an opportunity for me to know and to relate to him. The other place in our culture that's connection that is big is in airports. You go there to what? Make a connection. You go there to make a connecting flight. Now, that's kind of probably on my mind because my sister's here today. She's visiting with us, and she's about to head back to her home, and she lives uh, halfway around the globe in a, in a country called Myanmar. used to be called Burma. But to get from here to there, you have to have some pretty powerful connection. You have to go somewhere to connect with somebody and go somewhere to connect somewhere to go somewhere to get where you want to go. So there you go to an, an airport, and think about that. There's a coming together. There's a connection made that's going to move you on to somewhere else if we think about connection in our world there's a coming together to make that connection to move us on to somewhere else so that's kind of an interesting thing and the biggest one probably for all of us is a connection we make with our phones so this happens to me all the time i'm driving down the road talking to somebody and all of a sudden it's and they're gone and you go what do we say lost connection lost connection call them back up what do you always do i always do hey i'm sorry we lost connection. Well, it wasn't my fault, but we lost connection. Think about that with us. We want to have that connection. That connection, that phone is like a lifeline to us in it. And we want to have that connection because there's communication that goes on. There's something that we share in that. There's communication. There is connection. Listen to what Paul says here as I read these verses. Here's what I become aware of. Here's what he says in this. He says that he wants to know the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus in verse 8. Now, that word for knowing right there doesn't just mean know who he is. It means to experience by connection, by experience him. Not just know something about him, but to experience him, to have this connection. Listen to verse 9. And be found in him. To be found in him. To be found in him is to have connection, is to have a coming together, a joining together where there's mutual things, where there's life that is shared that comes back and forth. So there is connection that needs to be had. And then he says it again in verse 10, that I may know, that I may know him. That word right there is interesting to know, means to learn to know, to gain a personal knowledge of, means to feel It means to know by experience. You know what we may say? You may look around and see some people in this room. You go, oh, I know them. You know, I know know Jonathan Trussell. I know him. Some of you probably, most of you all would know him. But I can tell you this. I know him probably in a different way because we're together. Sometimes we may go to lunch. We talk. We share life. There is a knowing that is different than just knowing about somebody or knowing what they are. This is a place of having connection. And here's what I want to tell you. God wants your connection. He wants to be connected to you, and he wants you to be connected to him. And that's kind of what this whole soul I thought about. Paul had connection. He had a connection with God, and God had a connection with him, and everything that happened in his life flowed through that connection. So I was challenged with this question a few weeks ago. How would I know? How would I know if I'm connected to God? What could, I, what could I grasp? What could I understand? What could I realize? So I could know whether or not I just know I'm at a distance or I'm connected. Well, I just began to ponder through those thoughts for a few moments. And I wrote down a few things. And there's those fill in the blanks if you want to look at them. And I want to share with you four, maybe five things that comes to my mind about connection and knowing it. And then I want to share with you a couple of things, maybe, about how to have that, how to establish that, how for that to be real with you. Because I'm going to tell you what, 
when you have it, it is the most awesome thing in the world. It is what cranks your tractor. It is what fuels your fire. It is what motivates you. It is what moves you. It is what life becomes about. When you have connection with God, awesome, powerful things can happen, do happen, will happen in your life. What are some of those? What, what could that be? Here was my first thought. I just started to write. How can I know if I'm connected to God? And number one was this, awareness of his presence. Awareness of his presence. This is the verse. Just listen. John 14, 27. Jesus said to the disciples, peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. When I have awareness, when I have connection, when I have connection, I have this. I find myself with awareness of the presence of God. When I have connection, there's always this place I'm aware of him almost all the time. I can wake up aware of him. I can go to sleep aware of him. And all through the day, there's an awareness of the presence of God. So, hey, I've been studying this, and I'm excited about where this can go in the future, this whole concept of his presence. Because we know of his presence, and we speak of his presence, and we say he is omnipresent. I mean, he's all present, all places, all the time. And he is that. And we should be aware of that. But here's the greater of those presents. I want you to grasp this as I try to uh, think about this. And it's back in Romans uh, 8. Just listen to this verse. In Romans 8, 11, and it speaks about another presence of God to me that is, that is powerful to me. That I thought God keeps bringing this to mind as I think about not just his omnipresence, but it says, But then, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. I want you to grasp this. When I'm connected to God, I'm aware of his spirit that is not just out there. I'm aware of his spirit that is right here. His spirit, the presence, the indwelling presence of God makes me aware and conscious and mindful of the presence of God at all times. And what he says is who he gives to you life. So there's where that life's going to come from. There's going to be an awareness of that presence. And then there's another presence of God that's really interesting. It's the manifested presence of God. Like when we come together, and I know uh, the, the youth that's been down to a motion, they've experienced this awesome time of worship, and they experience the manifest presence of God. When he is praised and when he is glorified, there's a presence of God. And it's that presence of God to me that just makes you go, whoo, have you ever been there? Have you ever done that where it's like cold chills just run up your back and bite the heck of your head? And just, ooh, there's a, there's a presence of God. I want to tell you something. Connection with God, true connection with God, I'm going to know an awareness. I'm going to have an awareness of his presence, of his presence with me at all times. He's everywhere. He is inside me. And yet sometimes his presence is manifested just like it was on the day of Pentecost. In the New Testament, like it was in Exodus 3, when he manifests himself to Moses, there's the presence of God. I want to tell you something. Do you know him? Do you know him? Are you connected to him? Are you aware of his presence? Sometimes more than just when you come to church on Sunday morning, do you know and experience the presence of God? If you are connected, you should be aware of his presence. That is a powerful thing to me. So I began to grasp that. Not only that, the other one is this. is hear his voice. Hear his voice. John 10, 27 says it. My sheep will hear my voice and I will know them. God's voice speaking to me. When have you heard God speak? When have you heard? When have you known God speak? Sometimes he speaks, he alerts me. Sometimes he speaks, he encourages me. Sometimes he speaks to me, he challenges me. But here's the thing, he wants us to know that we can hear his voice. John says it when we hear his voice. If we have connection to God, somewhere along the line, you want to hear God's voice. You ought to be able to read your Bible and see in it and hear God speak to you a word, a truth for you. Because not only are you aware of his presence, but man, you hear his voice. If you never, ever seem to hear a word from God, you have to say, am I connected? Oh, am I connected? Do I know that? The other, other thing about that connection is this. You follow his direction. Same line of thinking in John 10, 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. 
when I am connected, he is leading me. This morning as we studied about the life of the Apostle Paul, and Paul was moving on missionary journeys and he was going to different places. He would say, the Holy Spirit stopped me. The Holy Spirit stopped me, and then God redirected me in a different direction. His connection allowed him to know this, that he could follow what it was that God was saying to him. When was the last time you knowingly, willfully heard God speak to you some kind of word, and you responded to that word, and you followed what he said in that? I'm going to tell you what. There's something powerful for us about living in this place of connection, about hearing and moving, about hearing and and then doing, about knowing that God is speaking, and me get up and go. More often than not, here's what you hear as a preacher. I'm telling you, people say this to me all the time. Well, I was at church the other day, and during the message, I just felt moved, and I should have, I, I could have, I didn't, I, and they're always saying what they didn't do to respond to what they heard. Here's what I want to tell you something. If you want connection to be powerful for you, when you begin to sense in your heart and your spirit God leading you to do something, rather than sitting and waiting and wondering, why, just go. Just get in there and go. Just go do it. Man, when you begin to follow that prompting within you, all of a sudden, I want to tell you something, life becomes different and you become greater aware of his presence and the connection is more greater established. I read a story the other day. I shared it with Karen. It's pretty interesting to me. There was a lady who's a writer. Her and her daughter, and her, actually her and her husband and daughter, took a business trip. And on the business trip, he had to go work. And her and the, uh, the daughter stayed at the hotel in the mornings. And said the last morning of the trip, there was uh, signs in the foyer. It said, free elephant rides today. Free elephant rides today. And the little girl went and looked and said, oh, Mama, look. We can ride an elephant today. I said, not every day you can wake up and that you can go ride an elephant. And she said, so the little girl's all pumped. So her and the little girl go. Sure enough, in the parking lot, they've got a set up. And a circus had been by and they bring the elephants over. And the little girl gets to ride on an elephant that day. And it was just one of the most awesome things that had ever happened. And here's the deal with it. It was spontaneous. It was moved from the inside. They responded to it. She said, they travel home. And when they get home, somebody calls her about her work. And she's a writer, and she would have been invited to go to Ireland with, to work on some writing material. And she's on the phone, and immediately she says, nope, can't go, can't go. And uh, she gets off the phone, and she looks back into the room with her husband, and he goes, well, what's the deal with that? And she says, well, I can't go, I just can't go, I can't go. And she started making all kinds of excuses. And here's what he said to her, it's just interesting, he said, so you didn't want to ride the elephant today? Oh. Sometimes we don't want to ride the elephant. When God speaks and he calls, get up there, move, go. I'm going to tell you what, connection. That is powerful to know connection and experience connection when you're willing to go through with it what, what he said. Here's the last one of these. John 10, 28 said this, I give you eternal life and they shall never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And, and here's that kind of the final thought. When you know connection, you can rest in the assurance of God. When it's hard. And when you got bad news from the doctor. When finances are difficult. When life is hard. When relationships is difficult. You can find this place. When you're connected to God. You can find a place to rest in the assurance of God. I, li I like this. I've thought about it many times when something happens. Oh, you know, sometimes I can just sit down and go, oh my. Oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And, and I just picture God sitting on his throne, Jesus there at his right hand going, why do you all worry? I've got it. Joey, rest in my assurance. When I'm connected, when I am connected with God, I have a place to rest in his assurance. How do I do it? You know how that's how I kind of process things for me. I read through and I think of things and I go, man, that, that's good. How do I do that? How do I do that? I think there's something here. These three things I want to tell you that Paul knew of how to do it. How to have that connection. And, and here they are. You kind of just grasp if you want to look at that. Fill in those blanks. When he said, I want to know him. I want to know the surpassing value of, of knowing Christ Jesus. I want to be found in him. And verse 10, especially when he says that I may know him. Here's what he said. And here, I want you to grasp this. Simply this. 
decide. Decide to know him. And here's the place you're going to make that a priority. Paul made that a priority. It wasn't just, well, I might or I might not. Like some of us are sometimes about going to church. Well, I might or I might not. He was intentional. And here's what I wanted to tell you. In Paul's relationship with God, he was intentional in that he was about what he knew to be about, and he pursued that. We'll see that further as we go. But I want you to grasp that. To know there, as I shared earlier, means to learn, to know, to get a personal knowledge of, to feel, to know by experience. And here's the thing. Paul realized this. He said, all of those things that are behind me, all of those things that I could count on, and he had a lot of good things, and he had a lot of bad things. And what he says, I'm going to let all that go in order that I may know him. I'm going to let that go so that I can know what it means to have a connection with him. Hey, I read these words. It was interesting to me. And it talks about this. And it said, Paul had to surrender his ambitions and goals in life. They had to be surrendered to have a connection with Jesus. And it said this, lay aside your ambitions Channel your energy into God's purpose. Ambition is what benefits you. God's purpose glorifies him. True connection is found in God's purpose. If I want to know true connection, it is found when I, on purpose, make my life about his purpose. That means sometimes I have to lay some things down. I have to pick some things up so that I can know that. So here's the thing. I think we just need to make a place. Decide to do that. We need to decide to do that. Where are we going to be with that? What are we going to do with that? I want to tell you this. Some years back, it was a Saturday. And it's Saturday morning. And I was sitting alone in my little study at my house. And I found myself just sitting there and kind of longing in the moment kind of thinking, and, and I just began to pray. And here's what I said. I said, God, I just want to know you. I mean, I, I don't want to just do church. I want to know you. I want to understand the essence of you. I want to grasp you. I want to, I want to feel you. I want to, I want to be connected. I want to know. And it's almost like this. And, and you may think I'm crazy, but it's like the Holy Spirit dialogues in my mind. And he said, do you really? Do you really want to know him? And I said, God, I just want to know. I just want to know. And I was holding my Bible in my hand. And here's what came into my mind. He said, Joey, you're holding it in the palm of your hand. Open it up and read it. And I'm not exaggerating. So I opened my Bible and it fell open to John 1.1. And here's what it said. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And he said, if you want to really know me, you're going to find me in my Word. This is where the revelation will come to you of who I am. That you can know, that you can experience. And then he said, it's up to you to find me in the pages of the book. So you're here. So that's a powerful thing to me. So there had to be some kind of intentionality. There had to be some kind of decision to make to put that into play for me. And I'm afraid sometimes we just want to read it and dust it off and lay it aside. And not realize that, hey, life can be found through that book. That book brings to us eternal life, and it brings to us life, and it's our way to know this place of connection. So there's a place just to decide in that. Verse 12 and 13 says this, Not that I have already attained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that which Christ has laid hold of for me. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Here's the thought. Forget your past. Forget your past so that you can live in the present. Forget your past so that you can move into your future. And here's what he says. Interesting as we look at that. What he talks about, all of that, he don't mean just to pretend that it never happened. He's not saying pretend that whatever happened to you in the past, whether it be good or whether it be bad. What he meant there is not to forget the past. It it never existed. But it means... To not be influenced and affected by it any longer. More often than not, we find ourselves held back, pushed down by something that's happened to us in the past. We allow whatever that is to grip us, to hold us. And I'm going to tell you something. Reliving the past 
whether it is good, whether it was a moment even of connection with God from the past and trying just to relive something that happened in the past, or whether it's something that's happened to you that hurt you, that hurt your feelings, that caused you a problem, that caused you a difficulty, that seemed to feel like it separated you from God. Whatever it is that the past that you hold on to is a killer to your connection in the present. And we need to grasp that and we need to know that and realize that because many people seem like they're hung up with anything to do and everything to do with what's behind them. And what God says to me, hey, I want you to live in the now. I want you to know me now. And I want you to realize where I'm taking you in the future. And I want you to know that and to grasp that and to realize that. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to just uh, forget about all that. Live with me in this place in the moment. And here's the last part of that, 13 and 14. I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it. But 14 says, I press on. I press on toward the goal. Interesting word. Dioka. To run swiftly in order to catch a person or a thing. To pursue after in order to catch. An earnest endeavor to acquire something. A sincere effort to try to realize something. Here's what he says. Here's the place. In your connection with God, here's what he's going to say. I want you to pursue after me. What does that look like? What does it mean to pursue him? Paul was a pursuer of God. I tried to grasp that for just a moment. Because if we're not careful, very quickly we can become very fleshy. And think, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to tackle it. <laughs> Here I am. I'm going to take control of that. And we're going to move that. And I'm going I'm to take it hold of it. And I'm going to win. I want to tell you something. I want you to think about this with me. Because I wrote down a couple of statements earlier. And I want to read Philippians. And listen to what Paul says in chapter 1. That I may know that this will turn out for our deliverance. Through your prayers and the provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope, and I will not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ will even now as always be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I am to live on in the flesh, it will mean fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which to choose. For I am hard pressed in both directions, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, for that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. Paul's place to press on was not about what he was going to gain in that moment for himself. Paul's place in that moment was how he was going to move out and to be able to help someone else know and establish this place of connection with God. Here's what I believe about this. To press on, to press on is not what I gain from that. To press on to that is when we as God's people in our connection help someone else establish their connection. It's kind of an interesting principle. The more you do of that, the more you begin to put yourself into that, a part of God's purpose, the more you begin to experience that connection for yourself. So I press on by this, by yielding myself to God. I press on by not being afraid to say these words, Lord, I need you. Do you see the difference in this? We try to muscle it. When I yield myself to him, when I say, Lord, I need you, when I am willing to submit myself to him, I'm going to tell you something. Something amazing can happen. And it's called a connection with God through the Holy Spirit. A connection with God. And Paul said this, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection. And I want to tell you something. When you know this connection, there is energy. There is the power of God released into your life. And he says to know the fellowship. The fellowship of his suffering. Here's what he says. He wants to know the power, the weakness. He wants to know the joy and yet know the sorrow. Here's what he says. I want to know and absorb and live life. You know what we want most often? Just whatever's good for us. We do. What, tell me what's good for me. I want to tell you something. Solitude. Grasp this. God 
wants us to connect. To connect with him and connect with each other. And that is done intentionally, on purpose, by yielding ourselves to God and making the other person more important than ourselves. And if you're carrying hurts and you're carrying difficulty and you're carrying a struggle and you're carrying anxiety, he says, forget that, lay that down and come to me and I'm going to give you renewal and you're going to be able to walk and to live your life with a sense of connection. Are you connected? Are you connected to God today? Are you connected with your fellow man today? Do you know that? I want to tell you something. As far as I know, God says this today. I want you to know this place. I want you to realize this place because this is going to be an awesome experience for God's people when we know the coming together and we know the connection that God brings to us, in us, through us. To know Him, to be found in Him. Let's pray.